this right here is a screwdriver. And this right here is an iPhone, okay? Now, my goal is to make my iPhone like a screwdriver. Let me explain, okay? Whenever you're using your phone, what happens? Usually, you go onto it when you feel bored. You think about, well, what are my friends posting online? You might think, for example, if you leave your phone, oh my gosh, I left my phone at home. It's kind of crazy. Got to go back. Got to go get it, okay? Now, here are the results that I've actually noticed. Last week, I spent a whopping eight hours and 16 minutes that I actually spent on my phone. Now, to try to cure my phone addiction, I've tried just about everything. I tried to install apps like Opal to help me block out the apps that I basically don't need. And guess what? It's pretty easy to override it. And if it's easy to override it, I just basically click off of it, okay? I've tried, for example, using the screen time feature to limit my screen time, just override it. I've tried, for example, to make my phone be like black and white, like this. And guess what? I can just click it three times again, and now it's not in black and white. I'm back right where I started. So I've learned something. I can't make it easy to be able to shut things down. If you are, for example, let's say an addict to something stronger than just like a phone, like let's say drugs, for example, then most likely no one is gonna give you the ability to choose the amount you're going to consume daily. No one is gonna tell you, hey, instead of doing, for example, five of those a day, just do two of those a day because you're obviously not in control over this thing, okay? So you really wanna be extreme when it comes to your phone addiction. If you actually view yourself as having an addiction like I do because now I understand this is a problem because I've tried stopping and I can't stop. So here's my goal. If I use my phone like I use a screwdriver, what would be the difference? Well, this right here is a tool. It's a simple tool. If I need right now to screw something in, I'm going to go look for my screwdriver, I'm going to use it, and once I'm done, I'm going to put it away. If I'm leaving my house right now to go to like a restaurant or to go see my grandmother, and I left my screwdriver behind, I'm not worried about it. I'm not like, oh my gosh, my screwdriver. No, what? No, it's a tool. That's what I use it for, right? Just for that. If I'm at home and I feel bored, I don't just go grab my screwdriver and start holding it and playing with it. Nobody does that, right? It's, it's ridiculous. And now I'm not worried about what my other friends, hey, I wonder what my friend is doing with his screwdriver, okay? Nobody does that. But that's exactly what we do with our phones. If we go out with our phones, we freak out. When we're bored, we go where? On our phones. If you, if you ask, you're, you're worried about, hey, I wonder what my friends posted, okay? Now, the whole goal for this video is obviously to help stop this. So what are some things that I'm actually going to do to help cure my phone addiction? The answer is, you're probably not gonna like it, but I highly recommend you be willing to actually do this. And by the way, I know I have a problem, but I've also seen people online while doing research for this video that had problems of where they were spending 16 hours a day on their phones nine hours a day on their phones, or like me, eight hours a day on their phones, right? And they lowered it to two hours and like an hour, and they're doing so many other things now and getting so much fulfillment, and guess what? I'm jealous. I want that. I don't wanna be on my phone so much. So here are three of the things that I'm actually going to be doing when it actually comes to trying to cure my phone addiction. Now, here's the first thing that I'm actually going to start doing. I call this the downgrade effect. Now, obviously, as time progress, phones have become a lot more attractive and a lot easier to actually use. This right here is actually an iPhone 6S. This phone, the battery life is not that great. The screen is not that great. It's not that pretty. It's not a pretty phone overall. It's small, it's, it's, it's kind of clunky in a way, but it works, okay? If I were to use this phone instead of, for example, my iPhone 13 Pro, I guarantee you my screen time is gonna go down because what? It's less pleasable, it has more friction, it's going to be draining the battery faster and everything else, okay? Now, the idea between, for example, like the downgrading effect is exactly what it sounds like. You downgrade from the latest and greatest, which makes it very easy for you to be hooked, to basically, a dumb phone. And I don't mean one of those minimalist phones that costs like over 200 bucks. I mean, for example, a standard regular phone that might be, for example, an iPhone 7 
or an iPhone X. This phone is, is still so good, so I don't recommend this. I don't recommend an iPhone X. It's, it's still good. It's, it's a good phone. You can last hours on it. An iPhone 13 mini, I also don't recommend this phone. The only thing wrong with this phone is that the battery life sucks, but it is still so good that it makes you it makes it so easy for you to actually want to use your phone. Now, by itself is having, for example, a dumb device gonna make you stop using the phone? Not per se. So what I've actually done also is I bought an iPhone SE third generation for like around like 70 bucks and I'm going to fix it for like around 20 bucks. I'm all in at $90, but I've also bought a Kindle paper white. And here's why. If you ever try to do something of honest work on your phone or like an iPad or a Mac or whatever you actually have, it's almost impossible because you get notifications. And you can say, Tommy, you can just put it on do not disturb. It's still too easy to just do this, to just flip up, now you're on YouTube. Flip up, now you're on Instagram. So what my goal is, I don't want to use, I don't want one device to do everything. Just like the screwdriver example. This is a screwdriver, it's for screws. I have a flathead. It's for flatheads. I have, for example, uh, whatever I have in there, my toolbox, okay? But I have tools for different tasks. Same thing. For reading books, I want my Kindle Paperwhite. For doing things that I actually need to do on my phone, like GPS and messaging and calling, and maybe finding the odd question, I want to use my phone. But for a phone, I don't need the perfect entertainment device where the screen is just like infinite and goes on forever. That's the idea. So consider downgrading. Now, here's one thing that I actually want to show you guys because you might say, Tommy, but what if I don't have the money to go ahead and buy a new phone right now? Usually, whatever device you have right now can basically replace it, okay? So here's, here's my math, okay? First of all, this phone costs around $550. So once I get my other device, if I sell this phone for 500 bucks, I basically just pocketed $400 and I get to use my phone less. On top of that, this phone right now is costing me around eight hours of my time every single day, right? Now let's say I wanna charge my time for $20. I get paid $20 an hour or whatever, right? If my new phone that I get gets my screen time from eight hours all the way down to, for example, like six hours, that was scary, the door just opened. If I go from eight hours of screen time now to two hours of screen time, I have six extra hours that I can basically do for, for whatever I want. Well, six hours, times 20, that's going to be $120 that this phone is going to be saving me. But not as far as making money, right? Because I'm not gonna just save more time for my screen to go spend it on making more money or work. That's not the point. But it's to have more time to do more enjoyable things like my family, my friends, my community, my learning, my reading, my, you know, like all these other things that, I, that, I, that I'm passionate about and that I enjoy. Now, number two, guys, is going to be another extreme although it might not seem like an extreme but it's going to be replacing activities okay so ask yourself a simple question look at your screen time right now and ask yourself what can i actually do with that amount of time what would i spend that time on and for a second before you start saying for example i would get a side hustle i would get another job i could get this and that like just put the money thing aside what else would you do with that time? Would you read a book? Would you learn about a new skill? Would you spend more time with your kids or your wife? Or maybe would you spend more time trying to find yourself a date, right? Would you spend more time doing things that you actually find enjoyable at church, community, service, all these things, right? What would you spend that time on? What would be those activities, okay? That's the idea. And by the way, for me, when I see that I spend, for example, eight hours a day on my phone and I multiply it by seven, in one week, I'm spending 56 hours, okay? You know how much time that is, for example, in one year? That's about 2,912 hours a year. Um, if you divide that by 24, that's about 121 days. It's, it's crazy when you do the math like that, right? So it makes no sense to be on your phone for that long. If I grab that time, literally, and although I'm not into software engineering, and I said, you know what, I'm gonna get a master's degree in software engineering, and I'm gonna dedicate eight hours a day to actually do it. You know what I can do? I can become a software engineer and make a bunch of money, okay? That's the level of things you could actually do. If I decided I'm gonna dedicate, I'm gonna dedicate eight hours every single day to my family, they'll, they'll probably go crazy <laughs> with all that attention, but the point is, 
your family will be a lot better off for it. You see what I'm saying? So it's about finding those activities to replace them with. Now, here are some ideas that I actually want to give you and I want you to apply this to your life. So number one, as I told you before, I'm gonna be downgrading things. So what are some devices that you can actually downgrade right now to save you potentially a lot of time on not being on your phone by making it less attractive and adding friction so this way you don't want to use it. Now, number two is this, replacing those things with activities, right? So the screen time you have on right now on your phone, what would you replace that time with? Some ideas are, hey, maybe I can spend some time in the gym. Maybe I can spend some time cooking my own meals, reading, learning, family, community, God, relationships, you know, um, maybe farming. You know, all there are so many ideas out there about things that you could actually do if you take this time back, all right? So add that to your list. You know, the point of this video is not just to watch it and be like, ah, but the point of this video is to watch it and apply things to your life, okay? Now, number three, guys, is this. Um, this is gonna be extreme, but is having a non-negotiable agreement with yourself. Now, the reason why it's so hard to try to manage this phone and try to say, for example, I'm gonna use it less is because obviously there are thousands of people behind the screen that are trying to make this phone more addictive, including Apple, including for example, Google, Instagram, Facebook, all these people that work in union and unison to try to basically have you be on your phone more because guess what? You're the product, you're the consumer, you watch the ads, all this stuff is created for you in a way, right? So it's like this whole thing where you think you're smart enough to actually use it or responsible enough or mature enough, but nobody is mature enough or smart enough to do crack, all right? Nobody should do that stuff, okay? I think there was a, a guy, he was like a rocket scientist. and he My first nine months of involvement with crack, I've spent over $50,000. $50,000? $50,000. Where did you get this kind of money from? Well, money, some of it was money that I had saved up. I was currently working as an engineer for a communications firm earning $35,000 a year. Now, you might watch that clip and say, I would never spend $50,000 on a phone or a device or social media. That's not my problem, right? But it's a time thing. So if you're spending eight hours a day on your phone, which is about like over 2,000 hours every single year, and you get paid $20 an hour, well, you're talking about just under $40,000 a year. Now, you have to imagine this, bro, right? How long have you been using your phone for? I've been using my phone this way for years, right? Like for the past like four or five years. So how much money is that really? And are we really any better? He was like a rocket scientist and he was like addicted to crack. And guess what? He died. Like it's you, you can't be smart enough to try to control something that is designed to basically mess with you in totality. So it's gonna be like a non-negotiable. Now, one thing I noticed is that I tried replacing my phone about like three, four times like this year. Um, and I and I went from an iPhone 14 to an iPhone, I think, what was it? It was an iPhone, an iPhone 13 mini, I think it was. Yeah, an iPhone 13 mini, here it is right here. So I went from an iPhone 14 Pro to an iPhone 13 mini. And guess what, my screen time, it kind of plateaued like around like seven hours. And the only reason I didn't spend more time on it was because my device kept dying. So you know what I did? I bought this device and I put it on and now it's always charged and I spend more time on my phone. So that didn't help. So, and I went from that to basically this, an iPhone 13 Pro. So I'm gonna sell this and this, obviously I have no need for all these phones. Um, but then once I get that iPhone like third generation, one thing I'm not going to do I'm not going to transfer all of my apps. And it's going to be impossible because the phone is only 64 gigs and I've only had, for example, 256 gig phones before. So I won't be able to transfer all those apps, but that's going to give me a fresh start. And by the way, you can use Google Photos. You can pay like two bucks a month, I think it is, and you get like a, over 100 gigs of storage or for free, you get like 15 gigs of storage. And you can upload all your photos onto Google Photos and you can just have it up there. And that way, you don't need that much storage on your phone. So 64 gigs isn't isn't like I'm gonna have to delete my videos and my photos, I won't have to, but I will have everything stored on Google Photos, which is more than good enough for me if you ask me. Um, but I'm gonna make it like unnegotiable. As far as, for example, like when I get this new phone, I'm gonna put it away in different rooms. I'm going, here's some tactics, by the way, that I could actually help you. 
when I wake up, I don't have an alarm on my phone. I actually use, for example, like uh, an Alexa device. I use an Alexa device to actually wake me up or an alarm clock. That way when I wake up, the first thing I do is not this. Um, on top of that, let's say you're working. Um, put your phone somewhere else, right? Put your phone outside. So that way you don't have to use it and you don't have to be like willing to use it. I had my phone right here in this drawer, which I have right here. And I put it here usually. Now, can you guess what I do? I do this. And I check my phone. So having phone, having these devices like not around you is like the best thing. The overall goal is to try to use your phone like a tool and a screwdriver. And by the way, I just I just came up with this, but make a list of the things that you do on your phone that are absolutely necessary and add a value to you. Make that list. In all honesty, if I thought about that on an app basis, the only app I would have on my phone would probably be my Google Maps and WhatsApp. And that would be just about it. Everything else as far as, for example, like getting a quick answer, I probably didn't even care that much about the quick answer, obviously. Um, or watching the video or uh, this and that, usually not needed. I. I'll, I'll, when I get that phone, I'll make another video for you guys. And then that way you can see exactly how I designed that phone. If you want to watch that video, let me know in the comments down below. But that's an application for this, which is basically what are the things that you need to do on your phone? What are the things you don't need to do on your phone? And how are you going to make it harder for you not to use your phone and not negotiate with yourself as far as, far as that, okay? Guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, like. See you guys next time. Peace.